I'm Kevin Hayes. If you didn't know, I'm the guy that does big cubes. People can tell me I'm okay. Um, so, if you've seen me on the forums or asked me advice, you'll know that I like to tell you to practice and turn really fast, which is very true. But I guess I'll tell you some things that you could learn from practicing and turning really fast that I can help you out with really quickly. So, uh, this is really annoying. Um, can everyone hear me, or am I like mumbling too much? Okay, so, um, I guess when I say practice a lot, there's like some more specific things, like practice is good, and that's like all you really need to do, as long as you're like doing it properly. So, just a quick general tip about like big cue practice. Uh, it's really important that you're not doing the same thing over and over again, because if you don't like try out new things, then you're never going to like figure out what works better. So like a general tip is to like take risks while you're practicing. Like I'll be doing a six by six solve and I'll see some like really weird center pattern and I'll be like, I could probably do this really fast with this really weird move set. And then I try it and then it doesn't work and I'm like, man, that sucked. But good thing I was practicing. So next time I'll be like, don't do that. Or I'll do it and it works. And I'll be like, man, that's so fast. I'm gonna do it in the next solve I get officially and get a 129, except that hasn't happened yet. Um, so yeah, take risks while you're practicing. Don't do that in competitions, because that's really stupid. Um, that's how you mess up and get really bad times. Um, yeah, also good tips are like, if you're not, if you're like hitting on the wall, as people like to say, uh, you can like try slow turning. Slow turning really helps your look ahead and stuff, and it's really useful, as well as like doing solves where you're not timing, like watch, watch TV because you know you don't sit around on your butt doing nothing enough already. Um, so I can watch TV and do like solves and then that's like really easy way to like figure out new cool things like taking risks. Um, yeah, so I'll transition to more specific things now. Like, so the first thing you do on big cubes, if you, okay, so if you don't know, if you don't do free slice, you're wrong, just do free slice. Um, if you do yow, yeah, 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 whatever. I guess it's like okay, I'll bet it probably can work really well, but I don't know anything about Yao, so eh. Um, so first thing on big cubes that you do is centers. Um, if you don't do color neutral centers, you're wrong. Stop it. Switch. Um, it's really, really easy. So I was watching Eric Lineback cube yesterday, and he loves big cubes, as he told me. <laughs> I was watching him do some 5x5 five five centers, and he was like making 3x1 bars, as you do. And I saw him make, he had a center piece and then he had two edge pieces and he matched one and then he like reassessed and then he matched the other one. And I was like, whoa, what are you doing there, buddy? So it's always very important if you're making like bars in the 5x5 five five center that you always look for, you want to like do an entire, you want to scan the cube for an entire step at a time. So like you don't build a center like bars like one piece, two piece, and then three piece. Like you see all three pieces and then you figure out what moves you need to do and then you do those moves, and then you have all the whole bar, and then you put it in. Like, it's really inefficient. I mean, this is the same for six and seven. Well, mostly six. Seven, it's hard to, like, if you're making bars on seven by seven, it's kind of tricky to find five pieces and put them all together in one set. Six by six, though, it's, like, really easy to find all four, because usually they're grouped up kind of nicely. So it's really important to, like, find all the pieces and then do your moves. Um, yeah, specifically on seven, five, yeah, also, so 5x5, five five, there aren't too many center styles. Like, you can make your bars, which everyone mostly does, or you can make, like, a 2x1, and then a 2x2, two two, and then, like, a 2x3, and then a 3x3. Three three. That's, like, pretty situational. Like, that's pretty intuitive as well. Like, there's not too many tricky things with 5x5 five five centers. So, like, yeah. 6x6 six six is, like, crazy. You can do everything. Like, so. Most of you probably, most of everyone does like bars only, or like sometimes they build like the center out, but like, nah. Like, you can do so, like, six by six centers, like, that's like my favorite thing ever because, so like, you can build really weird stuff. This comes from like practicing and like experimenting, which is how I figured all this out, and you can too by practicing. Um, but like, you can build like these two bars on top, like these two. Or you can start by building the middle two bars and then going out. And like you can build a bunch of two by ones, which seem inefficient because you're only putting together two by ones. But like on six by six, they're like already made all of the time. So like six by six is more of not 
you don't want to go in a six by six being like, I'm going to do bars this solve, or I'm going to make a two by two block. You just like look and you kind of see what's the best. And then you do that. So like, it's really important to do what I call like freestyle centers, where like, you just kind of got to guess what the best thing is. And it's really important on six by six and seven by seven, when you're, because seven by seven, you should also do freestyle centers um, to experiment a lot because I screw up six by six centers all the time because I'm trying to do something weird. But like, like when I was making two by four blocks a while ago and I was trying to do that a lot, I'd mess it up all the time. But now I don't because I messed it up like a thousand times. So now I'm good at it. That's really important. You gotta screw it up a thousand times and then you'll get really good at it. And then you won't anymore. Um, so yeah, six by six is all this freestyle. Seven by seven is pretty similar. The two by five blocks are like really tricky. Uh, I'm not that good at them because I haven't messed it up a thousand times, only like 300. Um, another trick for 7x7 seven seven centers is like if you're making bars, it's like generally good to make, especially in your second center, to make this, the middle bar first. Because if you make the outer bars and you have like middle pieces stuck on the middle bar, you'll have to do slice moves to pull them out, and that sucks because it's two moves instead of one, and that's really slow. Um, so in general, you want to avoid slice moves and stuff like that. Uh, so like, let's see, all right, edges. Edges are not like centers, because centers are easy and fast. So edges suck. Um, you want to go like, you want to always be looking for your next piece. So like five by five, you should always like, five, okay, so here's a general tip. You can do it on five, six, or seven. I do it on six and seven currently. The faster you are, the less like helpful it's gonna be because of the way it works. So like on six by six, the first four edges I make, I put them on the top. So I put up the first four on the top, and then once I make four, I flip it over, and I know that all the pieces I'm looking for are either on the top or on the edges. So you never have to look at the bottom again, and that makes your first four edges just as fast as normal, except for the fact that sometimes you have to flip it over to insert, so it only takes like a half a second instead of a quarter of a second. And then the next four are like really easy. I do that on six and seven. If you're not under like 120 on five by five, it's probably just, it's probably better as well because the time you're saving by not looking for the edges is a lot more than you're wasting by putting them on the top. But uh, the faster you get, obviously, the less the ratio becomes. Um, okay, so more specific tricks. Five by five, it's really common when you're um, realigning. So when you make the first eight edges and you're working on the last four, your centers are all like this. And then you'll be like wanting to realign them and you'll see oh, but these two pieces right here are matched up. I should realign the bottom and then flip this so I save it. Wrong. You're going to flip that and save it, but then you're going to realize that that was pointless because 90% of the time, if you just realigned it, something else is already going to happen. That's a, like two, two pieces are almost always matched up on 5x5 five five centers, so there's no reason wasting time deliberately making two match up when it's already going to happen. Um, also, 5x5 five five last four edges. Um, so the best thing you can look for is when you have, like I don't know if you can see it, but like the two outer pieces are the same and the middle piece is wrong, because you can do M, U2, M prime, and that solves it. That's really, really fast. Um, so that's the first one you want to look for. And then uh, the next best thing, or that's the one you want to look for. Also, if there are no two pieces matched together, which I said is very unlikely, but obviously happens, um, you just do, do just an M, U2, M prime, and then the, you'll have two matched together guaranteed, I think. I mean, I haven't, the math, I haven't mathed it, but I doubt it, it's possible to not. Um, so yeah, do that. And then when you get to the last two edges, uh, go to Christy Aces' website and memorize all the algorithms. Because uh, like sometimes the, some of the 5x5 five five is nice because even though there's parity, some of the parity cases are stupid easy and are like almost just as fast as not having parity. So like it's really important to know all your algorithms because like they're really fast and you don't want to waste three, like if you don't know your algorithms, it can take like eight seconds to do the last two edges when it should never take you more than like three. Um, yeah, six by six. Oh, edges for six by six and seven by seven are important because like it's also a big common thing is like you like finish one edge and then you pull the next edge down and you're like, I'm gonna do green and white. I have one green and white piece in the E layer. I gotta look for all three other ones. No, that's really stupid. You should pull, the, you should like, while you're gonna put the next piece in, like, there's almost always gonna be two in the same layer, because six by six and seven by seven, seven especially. Seven by seven edges should feel like you're getting lucky every time, 
because that's just how the cube is. Like something's always just going to be matched up. It just like should always feel like, oh, this is kind of nice. That's just how it works. Six by six less so, but um, you should always be looking for at least two already set up. Also, say you have two, and you find, you see like there's already three somewhere else. Switch from the two to the three. Like don't get too attached. You don't care. It's not like your high school girlfriend. You don't need to stay with this edge. You can uh, ditch it, and you can go to this new edge, which has three pieces already made instead of two, so it's better. Um, so yeah, go to that. Don't get too attached to that stuff. Oh, a trick I forgot to mention in six by six is if you're building one center, and like this is really complicated. Like it gets really, really confusing really fast. So only do if it's like really easy. If you're building like your first two centers, which are like white and yellow, and orange is like three moves away from two bars, do the two bars and then save it, and then finish yellow. Like, it's gotta be really easy, because it's really easy to screw it up, like building yellow while you're saving orange. That's like a really advanced trick that I only, I tried to use a ton, but then it got really weird. So now I only use it when it's really easy, but it's still really nice when it's really easy. You can look at the current six by six single world record for an example. Uh, um, let's see, yeah. Um, oh, six by six, cool trick that I'll give credit to Dan Cohen. You guys should all know who Dan Cohen is. He was the old me. He was really cool. Um, one sec. Oh, he just dropped the mic. <laughs> okay, so when you get to like your last edge on 6x6, you can get parity like this. Um, so there's a couple things that can happen when you get this parity. You can either do outer parity by moving like doing parity on this these two. Or you can do inner parity by like slicing just the middle one. Now, you won't know at the time when you get it because the cube won't be solved like this, or else that'd be like insane. Um, so you want to, if you say you do white cross and you get parity, pure parity on a yellow piece, don't solve it right now. Finish F2L, and then when you get to OLL, like right now, you can see if I did outer parity like this, I'm going to get an uh, OLL parity and then have to do parity again. But if you do the slice move parity, you're going to cancel OLL parity. So that way you can make it so like, sometimes you can do three parity, I was on three, on six by six. If you do parity at edge parity, OLL parity, and PLL parity. But if you wait until you get to OLL to do edge parity, you only can ever get two. Um, this only obviously works, it works every time if you're color neutral, because you can just force it to be on the last layer. But um, I only do it if it's on yellow, and I happen to get it because I know um, because you can also use your last two edge 5x5 five five cases on the last two 6x6 six six edges. So a lot of times I just do the parity combined with the last edge. But if it happens, it's much better to wait. 7x7 um, seven seven for last two edges. I guess sometimes people ask me, I do, I solve the first, the middle three, like 5x5, five five, and then the outer set, like 5x5 five five again. You can use your last two 5x5 five five edge cases on that. I'm sure you could memorize all 7x7 seven seven last two edge cases, but that'd be a pain. I hate memorizing algorithms. Oh, a quick general tip, which people don't like to listen to. If you're memorizing an algorithm set like OLL, the best way to do it, in my opinion, is to stop cubing, memorize every single one, and then start cubing again. So that way, when you get there, you're like, man, I know this. And that takes forever, but you do it. That way, you're not like, man, I think I know this case, but I might not have learned it yet. And then you're practicing like half the cases and whatnot. It like really sucks and it's a terrible and you're gonna hate yourself while you're doing it. But it's so much better. And that's why I did like forever ago and I hate learning algorithms now because of that. Uh, that's mostly all I got. I just only have like four minutes out of the 20. So I can take like two questions. If anyone has any questions. You. Oh, okay. I have a great tip about turning end slices on a big cube. You just don't do it <laughs> because you try to avoid that. That's like it's very important. Like always do your middle. Always like pair your inner ones, inner centers first, because that way you won't have to do slice moves and stuff like that. You just always like, avoid end slices because there's no way to do it fast. They just suck. My favorite big cube is six by six, obviously, because it's the best, and no one else is that good at it except for Felix now, which is annoying. <laughs> You see, you're wrong there. <laughs> what? Oh, do you have a follow-up? 
uh, let's see, I don't know. But I, like, I remember when a 7x7 seven seven solve took me the entire 30 minute lunch period, and I thought that was still kind of fun, so I'm just a weirdo. So just like practice, yeah. I don't know, I could do like an average of 30 on 6x6 six six still, which is, I think it's like an hour and a half, it's not that long. Uh, yeah. No, they always do be color neutral on edges because it's way faster. So. Oh yeah, so I do regular edges on E, and I do last four on M because I think it's better. It's like up to personal preference on the original eight people do on M. I think E is better. But I'm not really sure. Okay, I'll take three more questions. Who are the wait? Who did I already call on? The one guy that I didn't already call on, I forget. Yeah. Sub two on five by five. Oh my god, that was a long time ago. Uh, practice a little. Oh yeah, wait, wait, no, I know. Don't, don't uh, do homework or have a social life or a girlfriend. And then with all your free time that you have because of those things, just do Rubik's Cube. Yeah, 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 that's it. All right. Uh, two more. Oh God, you, you look really excited. Okay, I'm gonna be brutally honest here. Skeeve is pretty stupid. Um, <laughs> a Mega Mix is kind of cool. I like. I used to average like I'm like a 120 official average, but I did it this weekend. I got like a 150, which is slower than my six by six average. So that was pretty funny. Pyraminx is like kind of cool, but then like the tips seem like so annoying. Like they're just random and they don't actually affect anything. And then square one, like parody, I just kill myself. I already hate four by four because like parody is, makes the standard deviation so high, but when your solve is only 11 seconds and parody takes like one and a half, God, that'd be awful. All right, one more. Someone jump up and down so I can pick the last question. Who's the most excited? Oh, this kid, orange, oh, Felix, orange jacket. Oh, is that the same one with Bress's face on it? That's so weird. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I don't, I'm not very good at this. Three by three stage? Oh, um, so like sometimes if you're trouble making a cross, like go like this really fast and then see all of the cross pieces at once because that's what you should do. And then, like, because right now, like, a lot of times I just start building cross, I have to look for it at the same time. But if you, like, can see all of them and plan the cross really fast, that makes it a little better. Also, um, there's, like, some cool algorithms, like the R2, uh, like, the weird E perm that's, like, only two gen, or, like, a lot of sexy moves. And then, like, there's a lot of R2, F2, D, or a lot of R2, U2, R, U, F, G perms. Like, PLLs like that are really bad. Oh, 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 biggest tip ever. I'll leave you with this. So, when you get, one sec. Okay, so when you get this case on OLL and you're on a six by six solve that's really, really fast, because it only shows up when it's really, really fast, make sure you do wide F like this. And then you do the really bad OLO case, because then you'll get a world record, because it's happened twice to me so far. <laughs>